Hi everyone, my name is Maria and I've had my Eddie for about a year and um, am a longtime Mac user, worked for Apple for over 20 years. And so I thought that I would share with you how I use Canva, a really popular desktop publishing program available for both the Mac and Windows formats and iPad. Uh, and how I use Canva, bring elements uh, into Swift Publisher and then print to my cookies using Eddy. You can also use Canva and uh, share out your images and just print directly from a preview that's on the Mac as well. You will probably notice as I work through this that I will chunk up the information. So you might see my desktops change a little bit or look a little different from one the end of one segment to the beginning of the other. But I think it makes for a better session all around if I can stop and edit a little bit. First, let's take a look at what Canva actually is and how do you get it. Canva has grown in popularity by leaps and bounds um, as more and more people need to publish in a variety of formats in social media. Am I taking my content to Facebook? or Instagram, or TikTok, or am I sending out an email? Canva will help you create content for virtually every one of those formats. So I've gone to the Canva website, so it's C-A-N-V-A dot com, Canva dot com. And just to give you an idea of what you can do with Canva, um, I'm just clicking on the Learn tab, and this can help you create your logo uh, and make it print ready or screen ready. You can create flyers. Maybe you're going to have um, a cookie making class and you want to hang up a flyer somewhere. Uh, so you can make banners and collages that you might post somewhere of all your cookies. So really, if you can dream it up, Canva can help you make it. Now, how do you get it? Well, the great thing about Canva is it starts off free for everyone. You sign up and it's free. Once you get into Canva, I will point out to you how you know if you want to move to the pro version. One of the things that I'll tell you is that I um, create, I have all my logo and branding items there. So it's really easy for me to grab my logo and use it in different places. And when we start getting into the pro part, so that's what, 120 bucks a year, um, you're able to save a lot about your brand and how you use it. And uh, you have access to all of the content. This little crown right here will become really important once we get in. I am actually a part of a team uh, with my brother. We share a Canva account. He does social media for a business, and I use Canva for all of the elements and some of my branding as well. So the two of us share this bill, so it's a little bit cheaper, and uh, we pay yearly. Uh, like I said, I'll point out some of the things along the way that are, oh, that's the Canva free versus Canva for teams. I also have seen on some of my cookie groups where people come together, cookieers will come together and create a team for Canva and then share amongst several people. So for $150, five people can join, which again makes it a little bit more inexpensive for everyone to dive in. So that is a quick intro of where what is Canva? and how do you sign up? Once you decide to sign up, it will prompt you to download a desktop app, and that's what we're gonna move to next. I have already signed up, and now I'm going to move to the desktop app and work from there. Now that we've learned a little bit about Canva, it's time to get started creating a project. I have opened up the desktop app, for Canva on my Mac. You can also access through an iPad or I'm sure they have a Windows app as well. 
I have the Mac app open and I'm going to get started here up in the upper left hand corner there is a plus sign so I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to create a custom size because the Eddie has a pretty unique manual tray size and I don't think any of these others that are already designed will work for me so I'm going to create a custom size and it's going to ask me for the width and the height uh, if you are using a manual tray like a Milton or a Sprinkles or um, even using a brown bag uh, template then you should have the size that um, those individual makers have created theirs in uh, that probably came to you in a document of some kind so I'm going to set mine up using inches and the height the width and the height that I know my particular tray uses so I'm going to enter four point one and a height of four point seven two and I'm going to create that design and I know that I'm going to use this size over and over and over again so I'm going to save this just as a blank so that I can come back to it right now this is called an untitled design so I'm going to name this Eddie manual tray and so I can keep up with it because I already have one named this I'm going to call it demo for purposes of this video uh, so I've named it Eddie manual tray demo and I'm just going to press return this just saves to the Canva cloud all the time as soon as you make a change it's going to save it and you'll know that because you've got this little cloud here with a check mark in it if you ever want to check and see the status of saving you can always go to the file menu and click on save and save all changes if you're just worried that you've just accomplished something great and you don't want to lose it but it does save all the time even without you having to do anything all right so I got this created and saved the other thing that I, I want to do because I have a canva pro account is I'm gonna save this as a template and the advantage with that is this is uh, allows me to start and not have to make a copy it just automatically does it for me and I don't have to think about okay I need to go in and duplicate this and rename it canvas just going to take care of that for me so again I'm going to go this time I'm going to go to the share menu and I am going to choose brand template and I'm going to save this as demo template and this is getting to be a very long name Eddie manual tray demo template and it's going to add it to my brand templates and I'm going to press return and I'm going to publish it and basically what that means is that anyone who's on my team that I share this with will have access to it as soon as I share it um, and publish it so if I happen to be on an, a Canva team with other cookiers that have eddies they can use this temp uh, this template as well all right I'm gonna close that and so let's just go back and see uh, what we've got here I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna look in my projects and there is my demo tray demo that I created and that it takes a while sometimes for this icon to update even though it's blank it still should look like this one over here it can take up to five minutes for that to appear and then in brand templates I should have I should have two there but um, it looks like I have one this is my original template that I created um, let's say I'm gonna start from my original template and if I click on this it's going to ask me do you want to use this template or do I want to edit the original I want to use the template and what it's going to do is just give me a copy of this 
and now I can call it whatever the name of my project is. And my particular project is about uh, creating little icons or little bitty images to go on M&Ms. I have a whole bunch of those pastel M&Ms left over from Easter. I had big plans, didn't really move on them, so now I'm going to try to do some pink and blue M&Ms for a gender reveal to go along with some cookies that were ordered. Just a little surprise and delight for my customer, and then I can take pictures of them and post them on my website. So I am going to change the name of this template to Boots and Bows. And I am going to press Return, and now it's saved. So we've got a blank canvas, and we're ready to move. There are a lot of different ways I can begin designing here. If I look over on this left-hand column, you'll see the word des design or the icon for design, and it shows you all of these other templates that I can start with um, and literally deconstruct and reconstruct. Elements is really what I want because elements is going to give me just a small little piece of art that I can manage and put on my M&M. The theme again is boots and bows. So I think what I'm going to do is look for a hair bow that's really just an outline because the M&M itself is pink. So I'm going to click on, on uh, in the search area and look for hair bow. And line art has been a good um, couple of keywords for me when I'm looking for a very specific kind of art. So let's see what I get. There we go. I've got all kinds of hair bows. And um, I've printed on M&Ms before. And I found that you want something with a really, you know, very clear design. I like this one because it's got this heavy outline. So if I click on it, it's just going to appear over here in this canvas. If I hover over it, then I'm going to get these little three dots. And I can do things like favorite it if I'm going through and looking for a lot of different things and don't want to decide yet. I can favorite it or star it and come back to it. Um, and I can look for more art by this artist. Uh, let's see. And you'll also see in this icon, it has the little crown on it, which means this is a pro only design. So if I'm using Canva free, I'm not going to be able to use this design. Luckily, I've got a pro account, and I'm going to click on this and bring it into my canvas. Now, of course, my M&Ms are not four inches by four plus inches, but that's okay. This gives me a starting point, though, to um, sh save this uh, bow icon and use it later in Swift Publisher. So I'm going to create this. And I'm just going to try and make this as big as I can without losing any of the design. So it's just going to go edge to edge. That looks great. Perfect. Now, to use to be able to use this design, I have to get it out of Canva. And to do that, we go to the Share menu, which is in the upper right-hand corner. And I'm going to choose, again, I'm going to um, download this content. So when I click download, I'm going to get some choices here. What kind of file type do I want? I'm going with PNG because I feel like PNG works really great with both uh, Swift Publisher and it works great with my Eddie. So I'm going to choose PNG. I'm going to leave this transparent background. Um, I, I like to, I don't want the white behind it. So I'm going to leave a transparent background. And then the only other thing that I'm going to call to your attention, I am not going to change this, but I'm calling it to your attention. Uh, I sometimes resize things and will make them a lot smaller when I'm using something within a web app. It's like, oh, this image can only be so many pixels by so many pixels. So sometimes icons and uh, things like that have to be really small. So that's where you can adjust this. I'm going to leave it just how it is. I'm going to click on download. 
It's going to ask me to name this. This is not a boot and a bow. It's just a bow. And this is going to be for an M&M. I'm going to save this to my desktop. Uh, it's the way I like to work when I'm in, in a project is I just kind of sling everything to the desktop and then clean it up later and put it in, uh, in folders. So I'm going to save this. And it can even help me find it when I'm done. It says, okay, I've got you. I've saved it. Um, and uh, if you want to look, take a look at it, go take a look in the finder. And there it is, that bow M&M. We're going to come back to that, so we're going to need that later in Swift Publisher. All right, I'm just going to click outside of this image, of this little uh, information box, and it goes away. And now I can do the same thing. I can go and look for a boot image. I'm going to delete this because I really don't need to keep it for anything. Um, and I'm going to enter in over here in my search cowboy boot line art. You can see I already have done this. And I press return. And I'll tell you that I actually went and did this search. And down here at the bottom left hand corner, you'll see anything that I have starred or favorited shows up here. And I have a boot right here. It's, kind of, it's hard to see because it's black on black, but when I click on it, it'll bring it in. And there is my boot ready to go. I'll do the same thing. I'll make it a size. I know this is going to be plenty of resolution for an M&M. &M. Once I've done that, I click on Share, Download. This is the, it remembers that I like PNG. I'm going to create a transparent background, save these download settings, click download. It's going to ask me this time, it's going to be a boot. M and M. I don't want to save it to downloads. I don't know why. I'm going to save it to my desktop and save. So there it is. All right. On to the next step. Now that we have um, our artwork gathered up from Canva, it's time to put it to use. I'm going to start with Swift Publisher. This is my go-to all of the time. I know that I've read in some of the different forums that people are like, I'm overwhelmed by it or I just haven't gotten into it yet. So maybe I can help ease you in to uh, Swift Publisher. We do have to pay 20 bucks for it um, from Be Light Software. This is not something that Premiere um, creates. They don't, they don't create the other one for Windows either. Um, this does cost $20 to unlock it and get the watermarks and stuff off of it. I have been using this for about a year again, and I have grown to really like it and discover new things about it all the time. Here are some helpful things that that I think you will like as well. The first time you open up Swift Publisher, if you go to the Swift Publisher menu in the upper left-hand corner, if you will pull down to settings, there's a couple of things in here that I think could be helpful. I changed mine to show the template gallery on startup. And so it always always goes to my things, the templates that I've created. Um, you can decide whether you want US or metric here. And I have it auto save every five minutes. So I don't have to worry about it crashing or when it crashes that all of my designs are lost. Usually it does a great job. It does, um, you know, clonk on me every once in a while. But it's, most of the time, um, I'm very happy using Swift Publisher. I also have it checked for updates. And um, that, that's how I have those things set up. And I think that's pretty much the what you might want to check out, take a look at. So that was just in under the Swift Publisher menu, under Settings. 
and I clicked on show template gallery and auto save every five minutes, which is as fast as it can save. Close that window up. And now with the template gallery open, you'll see that there's a bunch of templates. And for what we're what I'm going to show you today, I'm going directly to my templates. And I've got a lot already uh, uh, created. I have a lot of Milton trays. I have a brown bag jig tray. I have um, some that I've created on my own with my 3D printer. So I've got a lot of different things going on here. As long as I can figure out what they are, I think that's all good. So here we are in my templates, and I have already set up the Milton M&M tray template. Uh, Christy will send you those directions to set them up in either Bartender or in Swift Publisher. I have created those step-by-step -step directions for her to share, or you can reach out to me, and I will also link them in the information if you want to go and download those step by step on how, how did I get here? Um, and there may be another video that I do to go with it. All right, I'm gonna select the M&M tray. I just double clicked it and it opens up here. Um, you'll notice that I do not have all of that artwork showing up over here on the left hand side. That's the view menu that allows me to turn that off, that source panel. Turn it off and turn it back on. I just don't want it any and anywhere in sight. Um, I'm going to bring in my own artwork from Canva. So we're all set up here. I'm going to design one M&M and &M and I'm going to print it 48 times. So I'm going to go up to the insert menu and come and get that image from a file. And if you'll remember that I saved it to the desktop. So I'm just going to click on desktop. And there is my bow M&M &M PNG. I'm going to open that up, and here it is. Pretty easy. Easy peasy. All right. And remember, we don't print white on Eddy, so even if there was, it wasn't a transparent background, it's, it's fine. And uh, if I let this come off the circle, I'm going to get a warning later that my image is exceeding the size, but that's okay because it's not anything that I really want printed on there. I've got my bow on here. I can see that my layout is good and um, I like what I see here. So I'm really pretty much ready to print. This is a very straightforward print once I get the template going. So I'm going to go, I can either just do Command P uh, for a shortcut, keyboard shortcut, or I can go to the file menu and pull down to print. So there's that little symbol, Command P, or I can do print. I've used a Mac for a really long time, so I tend to go with keyboard shortcuts and forget to tell what I'm doing. So Command P or print. And sometimes it takes a minute for it to figure itself out when you first uh, start it up. So I usually don't get too apprehensive when I see that little spinning wheel. But there you can see I've got a quantity of 48 set here down in Swift Publisher. And I've got my cookie uh, printer selected. It's not plugged in right now. That's why the red dot. You can see I've got all of these set up and ready to go. My paper size is the correct size for my 4.41 by 4.72. If yours does not look like this, then you may want to go and create a custom size, which I have done. Um, and I have all kinds of handouts, and I'll show a video about how to do that as well. But now I'm ready to print. So I hit print, and I will have. 48 pink M&Ms with little outline bows. This time, we'll go back to Canva and complete an entire design here and share it, also known as downloading it, and we'll print that design using the preview app that comes on every Mac. This bypasses Swift altogether, and we're going to do all of our designing in Canva.
So here we go. I am going to go back to my design template that I made uh, earlier as we were working. And I know it's the right size. I'm going to use a manual tray with Eddie. So I'm beginning with that in mind. I'm going to open that up. I will use this template. And I am going to change this to feeling 22. And you'll see why as we progress. All right, I've got my page ready to go. And as I was looking through different elements the other day, I found some really fun neon. And I wanted to play around with that. So if you want to go looking for those, I just clicked into elements and I did a keyword search for neon. And if there's something specific you want to look at, you could add more to it. And I was looking at the graphics. So I clicked on see all and I just started scrolling through and thought, yeah, these are pretty fun. Um, so uh, I found a frame that I liked and that was the starred item that I showed you right here. And I'm going to bring that in. I'm just going to click on it. Uh, the cookie cutter that I'm going to use is three inches by three inches and it has those rounded edges. And I loved this design because I thought, I want this edge to be on the cookie proper, like in maybe a quarter of an inch. And then this could just be over spray to the edge and, and over. So I'm just going to grab these handles and it's, I'm seeing how big the cookie cutter is. There's three inches right there. So I'm going to go in just a little bit more. And this idea is for someone who's turning 22. So I want to add some text to this. So I'm going to come over here to the text section and I am going to look for something that has a style that I think would look great with this. So I think glow would look great. So this is a combination of text and style. Uh, and I'll show you just basic text in a second. But I'm just going to go ahead and go with something that I think looks awesome. And I'm going to go with this one, kind of a layered one. And I'm going to select that. I just double clicked in it. I'm going to put 22 here. And press, oops, not press return, but just click out of it. And the, I mean, that's my pretty simple design. My design is finished. I told you this was going to be a really quick one. Love it. And so I'm going to go to the share menu and go to download. And I'm going to keep the size. I'm going to choose transparent background and click download. So exactly like we did before. And it's going to download. It's got the name that I gave it earlier, Feeling 22. I'm going to save that to my desktop and click Save. So it's sitting on my desktop up here, and I'm just going to open this. So if I open this up, and I'm going to open it up with Preview, if I double-clicked it, it was going to open up with that Preview app. And so here it is. And if I go from here, to print this so I can go up to the file menu and pull down to print or just do command P. I can start, I mean that looks not right. That is a big white piece of paper that looks like a 11, a eight and a half by 11. So I need to change the paper size to my Milton tray size which is what I'm using. Um, and this is what it's going to look like. If you don't have these listed here, you can create your own custom size papers. Uh, so I've got my printer ready. I have got my Milton tray ready. And so I'm ready to do a test print. At this point, I would not print on a cookie. I would print on a piece, probably a piece of uh, 
paper towel and see how it looks and see how it lines up. And then if I need to adjust it a little bit, then that's the tricky part when it comes to printing straight from preview. I can maybe try to scale it a little bit, but there's not a lot I can do from here. For those of you who are preview pros, printing from preview, I would love to know what other tricks you have. What if it's just not quite right in your design? How do you change the size of it? The only thing I can think of is to scale this and make it a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. Well, that's all for this time. And I am excited to read your comments and your feedback and see what else we can learn next time.